Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. It's time. It's time for May Day. It's time for the last class. It's time for the last papers. It's time for finals. It's time for some of you to turn in your library cards or to have a library book. It's time to go to the baseball softball picnic today at 2.30. It's time, my friends. It's time. It's time for the last chapel of 2010. And we are on the precipice. We are on the edge of the great wide open landscape of the summer of 2010. What will happen in that summer? Will you fall in love? Will you find a meaningful vocation and a job? What will happen in this summer? Before any of that can happen, we first need to do some things here. Because before we turn in the last papers and before we turn in take the last finals. It's, it's time to say goodbye, to say farewell. And this is always a bittersweet chapel for me because as I look out across this group of people, a constellation that we will never gather in the same way again, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude and I never know what to say. I haven't mastered the deep words. And when I don't know what to say, I like to go to the book that we love as a guide. For the scriptures are a guide for us in all things, even in saying goodbye. I like to go back to Paul's letters where he takes standard greetings and standard benedictions and he charges them with theological meaning that can give us a language and a shape to know how to end well. And ending well is critical, for as T.S. Eliot says, in my end is my beginning. Every end of something is a beginning of something else. And it's important that we honor our endings. We put a period at the end of the sentence. And to do that today, I'd like us to overhear how Paul says goodbye to Christians in the church of Corinth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, Paul writes these words. And let's borrow them today as our own. Paul writes this. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace so that the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. And all the saints greet you. It's what it says. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. I'm just, a, I'm just a herald of the word. Now hear this. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is Paul's final words to the Christians in Corinth. It's a benediction. A benediction is a kind of blessing. And that is what I want us to hear today. Paul ends this letter to the Corinthians with, first of all, some advice. First of all, he says, put some things in order. In order to end well, to say farewell, put things in order. Before you leave the soil of hope, and launch into the wide open landscape of the summer of 2010, put things in order. Turn in those library books, pay those last debts, whatever you have, or maybe, well, some of you, that's gonna be like 40 years in the making. <laughs> I get that. But put things in order. Part of how you end well is to take care of business. And one of the ways I think you put things in order at the end of something as significant as a year that we've had together is to say thank you. Go back over your year and say thank you to your professors. Say thank you to those staff members. Say thank you to, the, to those administrators. Say thank you to all of the people that have made this experience so unique and special for you. Find those people that you know that have went the extra mile and say thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to a few people this morning, and I won't, I won't belabor it, but I want to say a special thanks to PC and the sound crew who every day comes in here. 
I want to say a special thank you to Jack in the back, way back there, and Brian, who keep this chapel looking so beautiful. Very good. I want to say a special thank you to our president, Dr. Jim Bullman, for his love and his support. I want to say thank you to you. I want to say thank you to every faculty member here who, who pours their heart and their soul and their wisdom into the classroom and their scholarship every day. Let's give a special welcome to our... I want to give a special thank you to the Residence Life Program and John Jobson and Dean Frost and the whole cadre of, of that office that every day shows up and gives their best. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the, to the uh, worship team students that get up about uh, 6.30, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays without any pay and, and put this together into Josh Banner. Thank you for that as well. Hey, David. <laughs> it's a good thing. That's how, we, that's how we put things in order in the Kebble House. We, and I want to say thank you to the team at the Kebble House, the campus ministry team, for all their hard work that they've done. Whoa. We want to say thank you. Who do you need to say thank you to? In the next, what? Hey, you bet, baby. All right. Um, I, I also want to. I want to give my thank you to you students. Um, it, you know, we we have a unique collection uh, of people here that I think are going to launch off and do amazing things, and it's an incredible privilege when you bring some of the world's best to come here and speak. And to have them have an opportunity to meet you and to a person, them walking away saying, I've never experienced anything like this. Which is a testimony to you, to your passion, to your love, to your integrity. I just want to say it is an incredible privilege to be in a place where I can serve with you and to serve you. And I just want to say thank you to you. So put things in order before you leave. Another thing that Paul says is to say to agree with one another, to live in peace. And that, I don't think that Paul means that we're always going to see eye to eye on everything, but I do think that Paul is, is saying that as we end, I think that there's always a call to take care of loose ends if there's any dissension, if there's any need for reconciliation. Search out those people that you need to seek reconciliation with because when you launch off, you don't get this chance back again. So take the time, as, even as difficult as that can be at times, search out somebody, and if somebody has wronged you or if you have wronged someone else, this is a time to end well by pursuing reconciliation. It's not too late. The gospel is always about a new beginning. And then Paul says, greet each other with a holy kiss, and I don't know what that means. It may mean that some of you, this is the word you've needed because you were slow in uptake on the October rule. I don't know. But I think that May Day is upon us. I just want to say, make it appropriate. <laughs> greet each other with a holy kiss. But I think that what Paul is saying is to greet each other, to be in fellowship together, to recognize the significance of the other, that this matters. And then before Paul closes the letter, he says this, final blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that is my prayer for you as you launch into the summer of 2010, as you turn in your library books and turn in your final papers and take your final exams. I pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus the grace of the Lord Jesus is the reconciliation we have all been given through Jesus Christ's cross and his resurrection and his ascension. This is pure gift. The center of all reality is that God has reconciled things to himself in Christ. Not by anything that we have done, not by the work of our hands as we just sang, but by a pure act of God in history, in time to save us from ourselves. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It is this grace that relocates our identity, relocates 
our ideas, relocates our vocation to pursue a new kind of life into the kingdom of God. It is this grace that makes the new beginnings a possibility, where the old is gone and the new has come. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And may the love of God, this grace that's been given to us so freely, is a gift of the love of God. And as difficult as that is to believe sometimes, that is the truth in the gospel, that God loves us. You and me and this whole creation that groans. God loves us. May the love of God go with you. And finally, may the communion of the Holy Spirit. The communion is fellowship, it's intimacy, it's a participation in God's own life. That very same spirit that hovered at the beginning of time over the waters and the chaos, that same spirit that came down at Pentecost, that same spirit that Jesus promised after his ascension is the same spirit that is thick with us here today. It is the same spirit that guides us at hope. It is this spirit that we are given communion with through grace because of the love of God. As you launch into the summer, whether you go north, south, east, or west, whether you're a freshman or you're a senior graduating, looking for a job, or you're retiring, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all so that wherever you go and whatever you do, you will always know that you have a people, and that you are a people, a people of hope. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your everlasting love. We thank you that you have given us a new life by grace. We thank you this grace is given by you, the love of the Father, and we thank you that we are knit together in love by grace through the communion of your Holy Spirit. Be upon us now as we launch into a day of celebration. Give us wisdom in all things and guide us by your revelation in such a way that how we live would evoke an eternal amen. Lord, may your grace be upon us. May your love inspire us and may the communion of your Holy Spirit now be our measure, now and forever. And all of Hope College said, amen. Go in peace, my friends.